Welcome, welcome, welcome to the second assignment of Integrated 3 as we preview next fall's unit with linear inequalities. We did linear inequalities in one variable last time, so now we're doing two variables. And for two variable equations, we are definitely going to want to have our two variable xy Desmos graphing calculator on hand in a separate window right next to our assignments. So if you don't already have that, per usual, open that up. You will need it. We're going to dive right in, and we're going to use this Desmos graphing calculator to help us immediately. So open up where it says Attempt Quiz Now, and you should see a graph. Now, this graphing calculator here in Desmos is awesome. It not only does regular equations like we've seen, y equals x, y equals x squared, all sorts of linear, quadratic equations. It also does inequalities. So press this keyboard button down here, if you haven't already, to bring up all of these symbols. And then look right here at these big four, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to, all right here in this little box. So I can just copy this equation here. Y is greater than or equal to one third X. So greater than or equal to. Press a little slash one third X plus seven. Now I'm going to teach you this even more in the next assignment where we have two equations in the same graph that you can hit this little gear button up here and that allows you to select the color you want to use. Like I prefer purple. But that really means when we have two equations, it's very important because we want to make sure that we have one red and one blue to have the overlap be purple. For now, just keep whatever equation you want. Also be aware that these graphs are going to be from... 10 to negative 10 in both axes. So I can make sure that I zoom in to where that's what I'm seeing here. It goes up to 10 to negative 10. So I'm just going to focus on this little box here. Now, along with this, let me give you a little reminder of what's going on here. So this equation here, you can match up simply and see, okay, hey, where does this line cross? Notice I can hit this point in the middle and it tells me zero seven. So then I find the one, in this case, it's an orange right here, that's at zero seven. But you're gonna notice some differences here. And let's use this one as an example. I'm gonna hit check just so you know that it's right. But then let's cover our four different cases. So this is a greater than or equal to case. That's why you have this solid line shaded above. But if I was to change this just to greater than, check it out. Greater than, it becomes a dotted line shaded above because it still includes everything greater than this line, but it doesn't include the line itself. So now if I do less than, now my dotted line is going to shade everything below. And then less than or equal to is the solid line shaded below. So if you come down to two of them that look almost exactly alike and you say, man, this is glitchy or why these look exactly the same, pay close attention to whether it's solid or dotted line. And here's a good way to remember it. If there's a solid line below our inequality, so if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, if you could see a solid line here, it's going to be a solid line here. If you can't, there's no solid line here, so there's no solid line here. It's dotted. All right, so similarly, you could see for number two, this is going to be a dotted line shaded above 3x plus 2. And I can just look. How many, how many dotted lines shaded above do I even have? This first one's dotted shaded below. Solid shaded above. Dotted shaded above. Ah, uh, but it's going the wrong direction. Dotted above but in the wrong direction. There is a dotted above in the right slope. This is a positive 3 of slope, meaning up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. That's why it matches, once again, for me, the orange one. What a coincidence. The same color for the first two graphs. I wonder if that's true for you guys, too. All right, now I've got a dotted line shaded below again, but I have a negative slope, meaning it's going to go like this. We're going to have that downhill skier from left to right. So I've got y is less than negative 6 over 5x plus 6. This is one that I recommend you just delete all your old graphs and do them one at a time. If not, it's going to confuse you seeing them all the same. 
And where's this dot at? It's at 0, 06, so it looks like this one. Oh, it clicked the wrong one as I scroll down. We'll make sure that doesn't happen to you. If you're using a little two-finger slide on your keypad, make sure you don't accidentally click the wrong one like I just did. Good thing I caught that. And we have another dotted line shaded below, negative 4x plus 3. Dotted line shaded below at 3. There it is. And we're mixing it up with the colors as this one is blue. Actually, I take that back. That one was orange as well. It was this one that was blue. Well, at least we had one blue. Three orange, one blue. Wonder what colors you guys are having out there. Wow, we are sticking with this dotted line. And this one's a dotted line shaded above. Negative five thirds x plus two. This one's touching at the point zero two. And oh, purple. Hey, purple matches purple. That's cool. Finally, the orange graph does not win out. Wow, how many of these dotted lines am I going to get in a, in a row? Where are my solid lines at? 3x plus 5. Notice the 5 matches 0, 5. Y intercept. Ooh, it's a blue graph because the purple one's crossing at negative 5. <sighs> All right, so far, you probably don't even need to pay much attention to me. Just be matching up the graphs on your page. Hopefully your internet's loading a little faster than mine is at home right now. I mean, everybody work from home is quite a lot on the old bandwidth here. Hey, there we go. There's a solid line. Now I can go down and press the correct button on my keyboard down here, digital keyboard. And I've got five-thirds x minus 4. So this is going to cross at negative 4. It's going to be going... Hey, there it is. So it's at negative 4 in blue. And it's got the up 5 over 3 slope shaded below. And the greater than or equal to sign is going to stick around a little bit. So I can leave that there. Don't have to change it. 3x minus 1. And purple matches purple. 1, 2, 3. Yep. Yay. It's so cool. I'm just going to leave it up there for a second. Take it in. It's a lighter shade of purple, but nonetheless, my favorite color is purple, and it has come to play for the latter half of this assignment. Final two problems. We're going to keep with the equal to, but it's the shifted direction, so I'm going to press the new symbol. And one half, x plus 5, crossing at positive 5, shaded above. Any orange is making an appearance one last time, unless it has number 10. Let's see what color. I hope purple does it one more time, but we'll see. Greater than or equal to... 3x minus 2. Solid line shaded above. What color is a purple? Yes! Oh, I've never been so excited to see a color of a digital graph on an assignment. <laughs> oh, Mathlete extraordinaire, we are purple edition. Awesome, awesome. Submit all and finish. Hondo percent in the grade book. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. We have done linear inequalities in one variable. We have now done linear inequalities in two variables. When we come back next time, we will do the solution to linear inequalities, which, which is what happens when you have two graphs and two equations at the same time on the same graph. All right. Much love to you all. As always, I hope this message finds you safe, happy, healthy, and well. This has been virtual class of Dylan's math class, away from class. Best wishes with your day and week. Take care.